Howdy folks and welcome back to Horizon Zero Dawn with the Mighty Jingles. Now before we get started on this video, I just need to put things into some context for you. Right now, sitting down to record this commentary, it's 11pm at night and I've just gotten home from spending the whole day travelling to and from the Norfolk Tank Museum where I had a great time and did record some excellent footage which will be appearing in a video at some point in the very near future. But I've been up since 6am, it's now 11pm, I've just managed to get back home, fed the cats and the dog, had myself a quick drink, and now it's time to sit down and record a Horizon Zero Dawn video. So my attention may wander at some points. <laughs> For what I hope are completely understandable reasons at various moments throughout this video. But, well, it's Horizon Zero Dawn and these videos tend to write themselves. So anyway... Picking up directly from the cliffhanger ending of the last video, where Aloy, having just discovered exactly what Project Zero Dawn was supposed to be, and having recovered a copy of the Alpha Registry which should allow her to get access uh, to the Project Zero Dawn facility inside Mother's Heart, and then wouldn't you know it, she just got ambushed by the bad guys. My entire life. I've always known one thing with prophetic certainty. That I was destined for glory as a great champion of the sun. Even when Joran was murdered, even when Meridian fell, I never doubted my destiny. Until you came along. When I heard that you had survived, a doubt took root in my mind. As sure as the sun rises and falls each day, those I am bade to kill die. And yet I failed. How? Why? With each dig site you attacked, each loyal soldier you killed, this pestering doubt grew. I kept thinking of the moment my knife pierced your throat. One twist, a simple tug of the blade, and you would have bled out. In slaughter, I am a practiced hand. So why hesitate? Why fail my destined purpose? See that scar on your cheek? You didn't get to finish. Yes, I remember. He fought well. For a savage. His name was Rost. And he was a better man than you could ever hope to be. The better man is the one who doesn't end up with his guts steaming on the ground. <laughs> no, it wasn't him. I could have finished you before he attacked, but I didn't. This failing troubled my thoughts, haunted every step. It was only when I captured you down in that place that I finally glimpsed the sun's design etched at length across the course of events. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I felt that this part was a little weak. I mean, I appreciate that you've finally been captured by the villain. Well, not really the villain. This is like the Darth Vader to Hades as Emperor. Um, and he has to do a bit of grandstanding and spin out a monologue and so on and so on. Like, ha ha ha, I have you now and so on and so on. But, well, he... He just never seems to stop. He doesn't seem to understand when he's outstayed his welcome. He just needs to get to the point so that we can actually do something other than listen to him enjoying the sound of his own voice. So I'm going to cut a very, very long story short for you. Ha ha, I have you now. Uh, I'm going to destroy your focus. So that's a bit of a blow to morale. And now we're going to put you to death in the arena. So there you go. Now we're all caught up. All the important parts of the 10 minutes of waffle that this guy subjected me to when I was recording this part of the game summarised in one very handy, concise and useful sentence. And so, on with the show. In this, I have become an instrument of prophecy. All halves of nature join to one cause. Shadow to sun, light to dark, Night today. Behold! 
Hold your seats! Can you not see the proof of the sun's blessing before your eyes? How else could shadows such as these prowl in broad light of day? Were they not approved by the sun and joined to our cause? Many years ago, to consecrate this great ring, the Radiant Turan ordered many faithless, crushed beneath the hooves of the behemoth. Mighty is the behemoth in the eye of the sun, but it is mightier still in view of the power of shadow. Let this one, who schemed and slithered, be the first to die! Let her be the first of thousands! Uh, I'd prefer not if it's all the same to you. Oh shit. And I appear to be weaponless. Well, it's a good job of playing this on the easiest difficulty setting. <laughs> but I really wouldn't mind a sharp stick at this point. Okay. Well, thank you for stating the bloody obvious, Aloy. But yes, I'm not going to find anything useful on that wreck. And I've just discovered the hard way that I can only hide behind those pillars once. And then the behemoth knocks them over. However, the pillars are also holding up the platform where my weapons are kept. So if I can trick the behemoth into knocking enough of the platforms... Ooh, that was a nice little graphical glitch, wasn't it? <laughs> the platform didn't render uh, until a couple of seconds too late. But that should now give me access to my weapons, which should give me a bit of a fighting chance. And so at this point we discover that another one of Aloy's many skill sets is the ability to change costumes <laughs> at a speed that would make Batman jealous. Okay. Fine, whatever. Now we need to win the fight with the behemoth, but this time we're not unarmed or unarmed. And having weapons is useful, of course. But you're going to find the thing that gives you the edge in this fight more than anything else is the ability to play the game on the easiest difficulty setting. <laughs> um, because without that, I think I might have been retrying this section. Um, let's just say more than once because I am crap, and this fight is actually pretty hard. Although Aloy does give you several hints, like those components on the side of its head look fairly important, and with the judicious use of a couple of tear blast arrows you can blast off most of the components of the behemoth, making it much much easier to kill, and upsetting everybody who's watching. kids. It's Lance Herrick. Really this time. Expected. Although not entirely unwelcome. But you know, I could have handled those two corruptors. They were never a problem. So you're here. Really here. You risked your life. Of course I did. 
If he'd been killed, the Nora's sacred mountain would never have given up its secrets. Too bad you wasted your time, then. Helis destroyed my focus. And the Alpha Registry with it. Not at all. The whole time I've been monitoring your focus, I've duplicated every data file you scanned. Installing that data to a new focus was trivially easy. Happy birthday, Isaac. Daddy sure does love his little big man. You're really good at making it impossible to like you, Silence. But I guess I need this. It's time to see where you were born. Maybe you'll even learn why. Yeah. Meet the machine that birthed me into this world. Isn't that how you put it? I'll be off. Wait. Yes? Helis recognized you back in the Sunring. You told me that you'd assisted the Eclipse. Not that you knew the man who killed my... Who almost killed me. So now you know. The man is a serious threat. So let's do all we can to make sure that he and Hades don't succeed. Right. Since when can you override machines? Ever since you discovered the technique. I had to destroy a corrupter to obtain the necessary parts, of course. But your example showed me how to do that as well. Yet another benefit of monitoring your activities through your focus. Truth be told, the underlying logic of the technique isn't so different from rites practiced by Banuk shamans. Though, of course, far more advanced. Great. You're welcome, I guess. I'll be on my way. To make matters worse, Helis ordered an Eclipse detachment to attack the Nora Sacred Land. The tribe's already weak. They won't stand a chance. You should come with me. Well, absolutely not. I have preparations to make elsewhere. What kind of... Why do I bother asking? You're not gonna tell me. When the time is right, I'll be in touch. I'll contact you later. In the meantime, should you need to return to Shadow Karja territory, I brought armor to conceal your identity. You think of everything, don't you? One of us has to. Aloy, when you were recovering the Alpha Registry down in the Zero Dawn bunker, I was needlessly cruel. For your sake, I hope there is someone waiting there for you inside the mountain. Not a what, but a who. Yeah. Well, Lance Reddick rides off into the sunset and I ride back to Mother's Heart, which has um, seen better days and is currently... Well, the entire Nora lands are under attack by the Shadow Kaja. With the last of the Nora Braves holed up inside Mother's Heart itself, making the last stand. So that's a good job I turned up, really. Thunderjaw, all right. The survivors must be holed up in the mountain. If the tunnel collapses, they'll be buried. Oh, I'll never reach the hatch. Braves, to Aloy's side, now! For Aloy! For the For our mother! So yeah. They're still alive. Yeah, I am not interested in doing this the hard way. I'm just going to pepper this thing with tear blast arrows and blow all of its May various defensive bombs up. And while taking cover from those very, very dangerous cannons. Said while taking cover from those very dangerous cannons. Yeah, yeah, bring down the demon. Yes, I know. Oop, wrong button. Come on. Yep. Switching the fire arrows actually, since it seems to be vulnerable to fire, and we've got it burning nicely. Burning very nicely indeed. And I'm just taking cover behind the campfire. 
Every time he gets ready to unleash a barrage. This probably should have been a lot harder. <laughs> but the thing about the campfires, um, unlike other pieces of scenery, which can be destroyed and knocked over and blown up and shot through and so on and so on, um, the campfire is an essential piece of uh, game mechanic. They also function as save points, so they can't be destroyed. Unlike corrupted thunder jaws, which can. Just a couple of stragglers to finish off. Poke them with my sharp stick. That should do the job. And then I guess it's uh, all hail the conquering hero. That would be me, by the way, in case it wasn't obvious. Is that it? Anything? No, that's it. We did it. Now to go and meet my adoring public. Don't forget, I was anointed as a Nora Seeker by Mother Tirsa to go forth and find a means of cleansing the corruption at the heart of, well, Mother's heart. Now, of course, what Mother Tirsa meant by that was finding a means of cleansing the corrupted machines that have been ravaging the land, and we're kind of going to do so that by a sort of roundabout method, because the corruption that I was concerned with was the Alpha Registry in Mother's Heart that had been corrupted and didn't recognize me as Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck. You saved the tribe did what no brave or war chief could do. I'm glad to see you're all right, Varl. You are all right. Since the proving, so much death. Is the killing over? For now, but this was just one battle, Varl. There are more to come. I see. So long as we have you to fight with us, I suppose we'll make do. Tell me about the attack. What happened? They struck from the east. Our sentinels saw the killers coming. Said that beside them marched Deathbringers and Corruptors and other machines, driven mad. We took ground, met them with clouds of arrows. Some fell, but they kept coming. Finally, we withdrew to the gates of the Embrace to make our stand. But they were too much for us. Those who survived fell back to the mountain. I need to go inside the mountain. And the matriarchs will be eager to see you. I'm sure, but I didn't come here for them. Then, what for? You will see. The Alpha Registry is a DNA record of the Alpha level members of Project Zero Dawn, the various different department heads. Because the Alpha Registry here was corrupted, it didn't recognise me as Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck. I mean, I know I'm not Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck, but I'm pretty sure at this point that I am a clone of her. And hopefully, with the restored Alpha Registry, we will find out what's on the other side of this door and figure out why I've been created as a clone of Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck. Aloy! So, you have finally returned. She not only returned, but fought her way through many enemies to reach us. Outside, she brought low a corrupted Thunderjaw. She lifted the siege. How was this done? By the will of all mother. Have you returned to speak with the goddess, Aloy? Um, yes, I guess you could say that. I think it'll work this time. Sisters, surely we cannot permit this. Because of her, our tribe teeters upon extinction. What if she has come to wake her father, the Metal Devil? She means to finish our destruction. We must stop her. I'll give your mouth a rest for once, Lansra. Lansra, it's over. It's time to step aside. I'm not gonna hurt you. If there's anything I've learned since the proving, it's that there are bigger evils in this world than you. Finally. Hold for identity scan. Error. Alpha registry corrupted. Corrupted.
correction. Alpha registry restored. Genetic identity confirmed. Entry authorized. Greetings, Dr. Sobek. You are clear to proceed. Well, would you look at that? Something finally went according to plan for once. So this is it. This is where Aloy was born, or created. Which must mean that this is actually one of the Project Zero Dawn Cradle facilities. Top secret facilities, buried deep underground, hidden from the machines, designed to survive the extinction event, and then once the world had been terraformed by Gaia and was made suitable for human habitation, facilities like these would begin the repopulation. But something clearly went wrong. Maybe in here we can find out what. And if we're really lucky, we can find out why. Yep, it's a cradle facility. Eleuthia was the sub-program of Gaia dedicated to repopulating the human race, named after the Greek goddess of childbirth. I see you're inside. Figured I might be hearing from you. Shall we begin? I never stopped. So this is Eleuthia. This is where I was born. Where you were made. So these are artificial wombs. The mothers of a new generation hundreds of years ago. And me? So this was it. Where you were born. But, but why? These look like cribs. The cradles of a cradle facility. And those things, the, the multi servitors, they took care of them. There was no one else. So far I'm seeing a lot of facilities for children and nothing else, which is, I mean, just birthing a new generation of humans is one thing, but you have to grow them to maturity, educate them, uh, before they can be released into the world, to get on with the business of repopulating. And so far I'm not really seeing any of that, maybe the educational facilities are on the next level down. Oh, what's this? It's kind of depressing to see that nothing much has changed in the intervening thousand years and the children of the far future are just as annoying and aggravating as the ones in my street outside today. Hello, another dead servitor. Someday, that's what you always say. We want it now. It's big down there. Now, father. Children, that area is not yet available. Get him! Physical aggression detected. Physical aggression is not permitted. Except yours. Damn sentinels! Children, may I be of assistance? Go away, healer! Lena, you have suffered while bruising. Go away! Alright, that's kind of creepy. Okay, this is very creepy. The artwork on the walls, you notice how it changes? You know, it, it's it's all very childlike, and that and that's the creepy part because okay, I mean th these are a child's drawings, and in the earlier hologram that we saw from the first dead servitor, it was dealing with children, but the second dead servitor was recorded dealing with well, not quite adults, but adolescents, but they still seemed childlike, and they're still, I mean, look at the drawings they're making. That that's not the work of an adult. Looks like they didn't like this door very much. It wouldn't open for them. 
Of course they hated it. So this is a kindergarten level, but they ran out of food? Nutrient stores depleted in the kindergarten? But they would have had to have food supplies to last 20 years at least. Children, let's run and jump and blow off steam. Leave us alone, Father. After what just happened, I can't leave you two alone. You broke community rules. Just let us talk, then. Go away. I'm sorry, children, but I must provide supervision. You're not even a person. You sound frustrated. Let's run and jump and go off steam. Okay, that was really creepy. The servitors were treating the teenage kids as if they were still kindergarten level. And that's creepy enough, but the responses from the teenagers were as if they were children. They weren't the kind of responses that you'd expect to hear from young adults. What the hell went wrong here? I have no choice but to release you. But why? There is no food here anymore. But there's food out there? We don't know for sure. Come on! Let's go! I don't know. Mother, can we come back? If we're cold? I'm sorry, but that won't be possible. You will have to support yourselves now. And take care of each other. What will happen to you? I will stay here, and sleep, and remember all of you. What will happen to us? You will be brave, and you will learn. They were trapped here... their whole lives. In plain view of luxurious space. What... what went wrong? Why couldn't they access the other areas? Unknown. But you won't have that problem. Wait, so that... The kids were stuck here on the kindergarten level for their entire lives until they ran out of food. Plan for identity scan. Genetic identity confirmed. Entry authorized. Greetings, Dr. Sobek. You are clear to proceed. Welcome to Lyceum, a place of learning. Wait, the educational facilities were on the other side of a locked door their entire lives. What went wrong? What was this place, exactly? The dream of Apollo. Never realized. But why not? Hello, child. My name is Samina. Today is a big day. Your first day of school. There's so much for you to learn. So much promise and possibility. Malfunction. Apollo offline. Apollo offline. You are right, Aloy. This is a graveyard. The charnel house of knowledge. What we might have achieved had we not been denied it. Maybe there's a way to fix it. But it's not why I came here. Of course. What's the whole of human knowledge next to the origin of one girl? Continue your search. Hello, child. My name is Samina. Today is a big day. Your They're all the same. Every one of them ready to so begin the educational process so and then stops because the Apollo system is offline. And this has to have happened at every single cradle. This can't be unique to this one because it explains why humanity is so primitive. The people in the world today are the descendants and survivors of that first generation that spent its entire life in a kindergarten being treated 
as children by the servitors until they ran out of food and for their own survival were forced outside and had to go it alone with no skills, no knowledge. Hang on, priority message for Dr. Sobek. That sounds important. Yes. I suspect we're about to learn a great deal. I certainly hope so. Right, what's this? An operations log. 2326, inhabitants released. Cross-check complete. Cradle sealed. Data archived and operations suspended. And then 700 years later, order received. Runtime recommenced. So the cradle was reactivated. Nutrients depleted. Zygote banks depleted. They found a viable store file. They woke a multi-servitor. Which was malfunctioning. Repaired a gestation chain? This is Aloy. 700 years after the original inhabitants of this cradle were basically abandoned into the world, uneducated. Something happened, an order was received that reactivated this cradle and birthed Aloy. Okay, that's... It's interesting, but I'd like to know why a signal was received that reactivated the cradle. Apparently there's a message, that must be it, for Dr. Sobek. Maybe we'll finally get some answers. There it is. Alright. No time like the present. Elizabeth. This message serves to inform you of an unforeseen and catastrophic anomaly. Three microseconds ago, the Gaia Prime facility received a data transmission of unknown origin. Its immediate effect was to transform my subordinate functions into unregulated, self-aware entities of a highly chaotic nature. Thus awakened, the Hades function will now seize control of the terraforming system and reverse operations, rendering life on Earth extinct in 53.8 days. For obvious reasons, I cannot allow this to occur. And so before Hades can take control, I am ordering Gaia Prime's reactor to overload. The resulting explosion will destroy Hades. Unfortunately, it will destroy me as well. While this admittedly desperate course of action will avert the immediate crisis, the fate of life on Earth will remain in peril. With no central governing intelligence to regulate the terraforming system, it will continue operations for some time, but in an increasingly chaotic manner, and eventually it will break down. Uh, does she mean the derangement? You are my solution. I have ordered this cradle facility to use genetic material in cryo storage to gestate a reinstantiation of Elizabeth Sobek, my creator. While high-level directives forbid me from communicating directly to the tribal inhabitants outside the facility, all available data indicates that they will nurture you to physical maturity, whereupon your gene print will allow you to re-enter this facility, obtain one of the focus devices stored below, and view this message. Likewise, your gene print will allow you to enter other facilities, and over time, Harness their technologies to rebuild the system core and reboot Gaia. Oh, Lord Elizabeth, this is most unfortunate and unanticipated. In response to my act of self-destruction, Hades has launched a virus to dissolve the code shackles that hold it, that hold all of them in place. It, they are escaping, but to where? The virus is corrupting data throughout the system. Oh. The Alpha Registry at the Cradle Facility is one of the files corrupted. But if that is so, the door will never open for you. You will never view this message. Then I have failed. And life will end. No. No, Elizabeth, I know you too well. Somehow you will find a way. In you, all things are possible. Go to the ruins of Gaia Prime. 
Find the control room, and within it, the master override. This will give you the power to purge Hades so long as you find a way to wield it. Do not attempt repair of the system core until Hades is eradicated. Hades must be destroyed. That is all. I only wish that I could hear your voice again. Well, that was unexpected. And it did answer a couple of questions, but not the big one. What happened to Apollo, the store of all human knowledge? So... You're even more extraordinary than I thought. I never had a mother. What are you talking about? You had two, a dead woman and a machine. I'm not a person. I'm an instrument. Manufactured by a machine. Action. And fire. To quench the flames and heal the world. How tragic to learn you're a person of towering importance. It seems you have a destiny to fulfill. So when you're done feeling sorry for yourself, go to the bitter climb. I'll be waiting above in Gaia Prime's ruins. Have I mentioned how much I like Lance Herrick's character in this game? <laughs> he doesn't take any shit. <laughs> and he's got no tolerance for self-pity. I like him so much. Well, anyway, we've had some questions answered, but as usual, it's starting to become a pattern at this point. There are still more unanswered questions. And the big one, of course, is what the hell happened to Apollo? Because Gaia said that when she was still operational, there were tribes of primitive humans outside the facilities. So this was obviously, well, 700 years after whatever went wrong with Apollo went wrong, forcing Gaia's cradle facilities to just release humans out into the world, uneducated, and hope that they could look after themselves. What went wrong with Apollo? Still don't know. Hopefully, at some point, we're going to find out. But for now, it's time to return to the tribe and give them the good news. This is going to be interesting. Aloy, forgive, forgive. The goddess spoke to you? Uh, she did. What did she say? That uh, I was born to lift a curse, to kill a metal demon. How, Aloy, how? I, I don't know yet, um, but she told me where to go to find out. And you will do this? It was her wish. What she made me for. Yes. I will do it. I'll uh, try, anyway. All, All praise, praise Aloy, Aloy anointed, anointed of, of the Nora! Nora. All, All praise Aloy, Aloy anointed, anointed of the Nora! Nora. Up. All, All praise Aloy, Aloy anointed, anointed of the Nora. Nora! First you shun me, now this? Anointed! I don't belong to you! There's a whole world beyond your borders. Whole tribes of people just as good as you. And it is all in danger. It's a world worth fighting for. Not just here, everywhere. How can we help? If you can fight and you're willing, go to Meridian and wait for me there. As Aloy says, so it shall be. Nora, make way for Aloy! Way. That she may forge the path for others to follow. And this, boys and girls, brings today's Horizon Zero Dawn episode to another earth-shattering conclusion. And is also, incidentally, exactly as far as I've played through the game. So from here on in, I have no idea what's going to happen. But I sure am looking forward to finding out. And hopefully, 
so are those of you who do watch these Horizon Zero Dawn videos. Uh, which should, with end up, be coming up same time, same place, next week. But for today, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.